God of wonder, I worship you. Mighty warrior, I bow down to you. Dear Potent Father, my love goes out to you. Oh, some wonder, you are faithful and true. And I worship you alone. Ooh, I worship you alone. And everything within me cries your name. Holy, holy. Be the Savior, Redeemer, my rock. Creation. Hello and good morning and welcome to another service here at Word of Life. It's great to be with you. We look forward to everything that transpires today. Uh, my name is David Webb and I have the pleasure of filling in for Pastor Scott and Mrs. Phyllis. They are currently out of state in Reno, Nevada, ministering at an amazing church. And I know that God is moving there and uh, look forward to a great report once they get home. Today we have uh, uh, a great opportunity. Uh, I am, we have a special guest once again. Uh, my name is David Webb and today for the first time since I think we've probably been back in Alabama, uh, I am joined by my, by my wife, Tara Webb. And uh, her and I are going to be ministering today, kind of picking about uh, picking up where we left off from last week. 
And uh, I really look forward to it. She's got some great things to share. The Lord has really placed some uh, uh, interesting and amazing things on her heart. And uh, for those of you who may not have been a part of last week, we simply shared, I believe the title of it was called Prayers Get Previews. We talked about the importance of praying for our children, yeah. that each and every one of our children, they have a destiny, that yeah. they're called to great things. God has a plan for them. There are pursuits and purposes that God has designed that they fulfill. And the amazing thing about that is, is that the devil also knows this. Yeah. And because of that, he is out, as we talked about last week in Luke chapter 22, to sift them as wheat. We ran through some things about how Satan and his purpose is to rob uh, the children, uh, to rob families, to rob grandchildren, to rob friends of their destinies. And we as parents have a great opportunity. Yeah. And I, as I was sharing last week, you made mention of that part that I talked about how Moses, in Exodus chapter 1, uh, the Pharaoh knew the devil knew yeah. that there was greatness and a destiny upon earth and he maneuvered Pharaoh to eradicate and destroy the male line that would ultimately lead to Jesus being born. We also see that when Jesus was born, there was another king that was set up by the devil to eradicate and try to destroy that bloodline. Mm -hmm. But how many of you can say, thank God Amen. for the blood covenant that we have yeah. and for Jesus doing what he did. Yeah. Now there were two things in that. Number one, that there were parents who were mm -hmm. spiritually attuned to, in Moses' time and in Jesus' time, they were spiritually attuned enough to know that they needed to make a move. That when the Holy Spirit led them, when He had them get up and physically make a move, they were able to make a move. Yeah. And the second thing about that was, is that their move allowed Moses and Jesus to move in the things that they needed to. Yeah. We find that Jesus, I mean the Word of God declares in Him, meaning in Jesus, we live, we move, and we have our being. Yeah. We need to be moving as parents, allowing our children to make the moves that they need. Yeah. Pick it up from there and share it on the lines of what you were sharing. Well, um, I read, I, when he was talking about that last week, I was looking in my Bible, following along um, in the service with him, and I had written a note in my Bible many years ago in that Hebrews chapter 11 about Moses. Um, but it says in there, well, let me just turn to it real quick because I think it's so important. And, and it's so important to know these things, but it's just as important to recognize that we, our moves as parents, pave the way for our children's moves. In Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it says, talking about Moses, it says, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. That's number one. They weren't afraid of the king's commandment. Yeah. I mean, you talk about threats being present in the lives of a parent regarding their baby, but they were not afraid. God gave them an answer in that hour. And uh, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, so when Moses became of the, of the you know, age of accountability, yeah. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt. He left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses' parents, and this is what I wrote in my Bible, Moses' parents' actions paved the way for Moses' actions when he was come to years. Yeah. And you know, I think that's so important that we understand that we as parents, especially in this hour, yes, but especially in this hour, our children don't see us reacting to fear. They don't see us reacting to the circumstances of the world, but they see us living according to the Word of God that is absolutely the, the plan of God and the plan of God for victory where our kids are concerned. Yeah. You know, we've got two, we have two teenage sons. We have a 17 year old and a 19 year old. And I would say they've come to years. Yeah. They, they're definitely come to the age of accountability and we've not had it easy, yeah. <laughs> you and I. No. But we have made some decisions and taken some stands and our kids are making wise choices as a result of it. But I was thinking about this, about just the threats that Moses' parents must have felt, even Jesus' parents, Joseph and Mary. I mean, 
they knew God's hand upon the son that Mary was carrying. But yet they, they, had, they knew they had to make some moves because they knew the destiny upon his life. And I was thinking about this, just the fear that these parents must have been experiencing. I know fear has tried to come against me. And I know fear has, has come against you. It's, it's coming against our generation where our children and even grandchildren are concerned. But God has given us tools yeah. to win. He's given us tools to be victorious where our children are concerned. I want to read over in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. And this is the verse that I got in, in just, just meditating upon these things. And how do we parent in these last days? And this is a verse that I go to often. It says in, first, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, in verse 5, it says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in, that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. First of all, as parents, we got to recognize that God's called us to be parents. Yeah. He's put gifts within us that are going to equip us to, be, uh, to, to raise our children correctly and to help them stay on the path and the plan that God has for them. Stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, right. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There's something that God hasn't given us, but then there are these three things that He has given us. Yeah. The spirit of power, love, and a sound mind is all we need yeah. to do it right in these days. Amen. And I tell you what, it is a constant battle to fight fear, to resist the spirit of fear where the next generations are concerned. But to walk in the power and the love and the sound mind, it takes discipline. It does. And it takes effort. And it, it, is, it doesn't come easy. There is always going to be temptation to think about, meditate on the things that are coming through the news, the things that you're seeing, the things that you're hearing, social media, you name it. It's out there, but it is our responsibility to maintain that peace, to maintain that walk with God according to His Word. Yeah. So the power, mm -hmm. that's number one. Where do we get the power? I'm going to tell you exactly where you get the power. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, I'm going to read from the Amplified Translation because this is, this says it all. It's awesome. And I tell you, it works. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the Amplified says, For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, yeah. making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life and the immortal spirit and of the joints and marrow that is the deepest parts of our nature exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. The word that God speaks is alive and it's full of power. Amen. That's what we've been given. Yes. That's what we have in our equipping to make sure that our children remain on the path and the plan that God has for them. So it is active, it's operative, it's operative energizing, and effective. I, I've been uh, you know, just in touch with different moms in the last several months, and I tell you, this is the verse that I keep going to. The word that God speaks is, and the, words, the word of God that we speak. Right. That's the word that works. It's not the word that we know. It's not the word that sits on the coffee table. It's not the word that we've learned at some time. It's not even the word that we hear somebody else. It's the word that we speak as parents yeah. that is active and it is operative and it is effective in the lives of our children. I have certain things that I have quoted over my children since they were babies. That's right. um, that there are, of course, we, I pray the Ephesians prayers over them very regularly. And then there are some things that I, that in certain seasons of their lives, I have used to target certain situations that they're dealing with. But I, I want to just give one. Um, I have several here, but I want to give just one that I say over them nearly every single day. And I tell you what, there is, um, there's unction every time I say it, David. Yeah. Every time I say it, I walk my pathway, my, I mean my path that I walk every day, doing yeah. my, my confessions and praying and stuff. 
But in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, it, that's, that's what this confession is according to. It says, Jesus said that whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever I loose on earth is loosed in, in heaven. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I bind the feet of my children to the plan of God for their lives, and they will never stray from that path. That's right. Amen. You know what? I've seen, them, I've seen them at times try to get off that path, but I just keep putting this word in my mouth, and yeah. it is active, and it's alive, it's full of power, and it is effective in their lives. Yeah. That is how you do it. That's how you, we walk in the power that God's given us. Here's another one according to Isaiah 54, 13. All my children are taught of the Lord, and great is the peace and undisturbed composure of Trent and Clay. In righteousness they are established. They are in conformity with God's will and order. They are far from the thought of oppression or destruction, for they shall not fear, and they are far from terror, for it shall not come near them. Yeah. Yeah. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you put the Word to work. That's how we win in this hour. Yeah. It is the Word of God that we speak, that it's alive and full of power. Yeah. It's affecting their lives. It is effective in their lives. So I encourage you, you get, get the Word yeah. in your mouth and preach it. Become a prophet to your children. That's right. They don't have to know you're doing it. Right. I know I was having a Bible study when we lived out in California with some um, ladies in the church and really sweet time. And I was just sharing along these lines with some of them. And there was one uh, lady um, who was just having some struggles with her daughter. She had, she had just graduated high school and she was just, you know, going down the wrong path and she saw that. Well, her daughter was at the point where you know, it would make her mad and infuriate her for her mom to sit there and preach the word to her and say scriptures over her and all that. It just caused tension in the home. And the mom knew, you know, it's, it's important that we keep peace here. So her mom, um, she, got, she got hold of this revelation about binding the feet of her children to the plan of God for her life. Yeah. And uh, her daughter was going through some uh, physical challenges. Her feet were hurting. And the mom, the Holy Ghost gave this mom an idea. She went and she got the oil, you know, the essential oils that you can rub on hard places on your feet and just bring some relief. She would get that oil and under her breast, she'd sit there and she would rub that oil on her daughter's feet and she would just sit there and say that under her breath. Her daughter didn't know she was doing it. Mm. And you know what? That thing turned. Yeah, amen. It turned. You amen. know why? Because she put the word in her mouth. That's right. And it was active and it was operative and effective in her daughter's life. Yeah. Never, ever, ever let the word depart from your mouth where your kids are concerned. It works. Amen. And then um, we go to the, the next tool listed here in the Second Timothy um, chapter 1. It says, um, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Love and a sound mind to me, they really work together as I've studied this out. We, we've heard the story of Brother Hagen where that uh, mother came to him about her child who, you know, was just, you know, serving the devil basically, just not living for God at all, just giving her a hard time and rebelling. And she came to him and she said, Brother Hagen, I want you to promise me something. And she asked him to promise her that he would pray for her daughter every day. And he said, no. He's not going to do it. She said, well, then sometimes when you think of her, then, or think of him, then pray for him. He said, I'm not going to do it. And it just shocked her. Well, why? And he said, because my praying for your child is not going to do any good when you lie awake worrying about him. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to do the work, what's my praying going to do yeah. for your child? And he's absolutely true. Worrying is not loving our children. Yeah, that's awesome. Love and a sound mind go together. We surround our children with our faith and our love, and that does not include worry. My, one of my best friends growing up, she said, uh, we, we met years you know, after we had you know, gotten married, had children, that sort of thing, and she was talking about her own mother. She said, you know, Mom, she just, she just loves us so much that she worries about us all the time. She just... And some people equate love to worry. That is not what love is. The yeah. Bible defines, the God kind of love is clearly defined in the Bible. And we can, you know, study that out and find what love is. 
but I want to I want to read just a couple of verses here in Philippians chapter 4 um, verse 6 the Bible says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. We cannot equate worry and anxiety with love. They're actually opposites. Love is, is defined in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You want to you wanna win your children over. It's not through worry. Yeah. You want to see your children walk in the path and in the plan that God has for them. It's by following the God kind of love that he lays out in the scripture. I tell you what, it's, um, it's uh, anxiety is such a tactic of the enemy. That's right. it, it causes us to yield to the spirit of fear and it, and it, it doesn't, well, the Bible talks about it. It says, um, who can add, Jesus said, who can add one stature to, to their cubit by, uh, or one cubit to their stature by worrying? It doesn't happen. You know, worry doesn't build you up. Worry tears you down. Yeah. And that's not what you want where your kids are concerned. You want to be strong. That's right. You want to be effective. You want to be a person of strength. You want to be somebody that they can depend on. And a mother or father or a grandmother or a grandfather who worries is not strength to a child. Yeah. They need to see you strong. They need to know that you love them through your prayers and through the words that you speak over them. So love and a sound mind, you know, and I know, I know this, is, this is easier said than done, but it is possible to have a sound mind. In, uh, in 1 uh, Timothy chapter 2 in the Amplified, it's, it, this is what it says, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Well, I didn't mark it. Hang on. Let me get there. 2 Timothy chapter 1 in verse 7 it says for God did not give us a spirit of timidity of cowardice of craven and cringing and fawning fear but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control a calm and well-balanced mind is one that doesn't worry yeah. and that's what that's what love does too amen i'm not going to for time's sake i'm not going to go into it but you know, I encourage you, if you find yourself worrying, if you find yourself with anxiety concerning your children or your grandchildren or your family or coworkers or anybody that matters to you, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 over yourself. Find different translations. I love different translations, different words that come out in the message, the passion, the amplified, and the King James. So I kind of go through all of them at different times. But Read those things over yourself. You, if you were born of God, you are born of love. Yeah. And those qualities of love in 1 Corinthians 13 are things that we ought to be showing. Uh, it's, it's important that we are people of love. Yeah. And, and we do that by the, by the uh, things that we so, say over ourselves, but we also do it by our actions. And worrying is nowhere found in any translation of 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's a lie of the enemy. In Romans chapter 12, and I'll, I'll wrap up with this. And honey, if you've got something, then please jump in. But in Romans chapter 12, in verse 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, I noticed this not too long ago, actually. No, you know, a lot of times we, we equate sacrifice with even a death. You know, people who sacrifice their lives, a lot of times are martyrs or that sort of thing. But the Bible says a living sacrifice. That means putting our feelings aside. That means putting our flesh under a living sacrifice. In verse 2 it says, And be not conformed to this world. In the world, worry equals love. But be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, and then verse 9, and I'll end with this. And let love be without dissimulation. 
Dissimulation means pre pretending. Let love be, don't, don't let your love be pretending. Worrying is a pretend love. Yeah. It's not real love. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Amen. The Word of God, ladies and gentlemen, is our answer where our children and our grandchildren are concerned. Yeah. This world, we cannot be, we cannot be um, well, right here, be conformed to this world. We're not of this world. We live right. in it, but we're not to be of it. We are to be people of the Word and the Spirit. And when we do, our children will rise up yeah. and be who they're called to be, like Moses was, like Jesus did, and fulfilled their destiny and made a difference. We need godly young people. Yeah. And we as parents get that opportunity. Amen. Amen. That it? That's it. Amen. <laughs> well, sweetheart, I don't know that I really can add anything to that. That was a fantastic job. I did like one point that she brought out, and that is that we are to be a prophet unto our own children. Yeah. I heard someone say one time that in order to be have a prophetic voice, you've got to have a prophetic ear. And what that means is, is we've got to, as parents, as grandparents, as friends, as, as fathers and mothers, we have to be spending time with God and tuning in to what He is saying to us yeah. so that yeah. we can be that voice right. uh, in the lives of our children or our yeah. grandchildren. Understand this, that prayer is God's way of enlisting you mm -hmm. in what He is doing. You see, He wants to do things in your life. Yeah. He wants to do things in your children's life, your grandchildren's, those that uh, you find yourself friends with. He wants you to be a yes. part of that. Yeah. And prayer is His way of enlisting you to hearing and seeing the things that He wants to do, not only in your life, but in others. That way you get to be a part of it, yeah. but you also get to experience the joy and the satisfaction that comes with just that fellowship within that. I remember one of the things that uh, 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 back in uh, January, uh, January 1st of 2000, obviously a brand new millennium, mm -hmm. on that very night, uh, uh, Dr. Ed Dufresne spoke a prophetic word over me. And uh, it's one of those things that I've always mm -hmm. gone back from time to time and I've just said over myself, there was someone who had a prophetic ear over mm -hmm. my life yeah. and he, he, through his prophetic voice, spoke things over me that are still playing out in this very millennium. And uh, I'm so thankful for that. And yeah. I tell you what, we've got two boys who are blessed to have you as a mom. Aww. And uh, uh, I'm certainly blessed to have you as a, as a wife. And uh, that was just an outstanding job. And I know that it certainly blessed all the people. So yeah, hey, we hope that you've enjoyed today. And uh, uh, thank you for being a part of this service. And I pray that these things that Tara has uh, shared with you today are things that you can grab hold of and uh, utilize Amen. and uh, put to work in your life. Preach the word. Yes. Preach the word to your uh, to your children. Yes. I'm not talking about you know shoving it down their throat. I'm just talking about preach what the word yeah. has to say and what it can do in their life. And I know that it'll be a blessing to them. Amen. Well, hey, at this time, we wanna give you an opportunity for those who desire to plant a seed into this ministry. If uh, today's message has been a, a blessing to you, then uh, uh, take the opportunity to plant a seed. And please know that uh, there are great things that are happening here at Word of Life. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing testimony after yeah. testimony uh, within marriages uh, concerning healings, uh, concerning uh, COVID, uh, concerning businesses. Uh, uh, businesses. Yeah. And uh, many of them will come back and tell you that it's a result of a financial seed that they planted, that something they were believing God for came to fruition mm -hmm. in their life. So if this, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, if today's message has been a blessing to you, if uh, the Holy Spirit is leading you to plant a seed, we wanna give you that opportunity. All the ways that you can give, you find up there on the screen, uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, avenue or street you'd like to take concerning your giving, whether it's by text, whether it's uh, via online or mailing it in, all those are available up on your screen. And we wanna say thank you yes, for sowing into you. this ministry. God is doing great things. And we are super excited about in the next few months, uh, we believe that we're gonna be able to uh, come to you uh, in a whole new way yes. uh, from a whole new studio. And uh, we're really thankful for what God is doing here. So if you've taken the time to plant that seed, I wanna pray over you real quick. Heavenly Father, right now, I thank you. 
for those who are sowing into this ministry. I thank you, Lord God, that you see their heart, you see their seed. And as they plant that seed, that seed immediately, right now, it goes to work yes. in their life. Yes. The Heavenly Father, there is a supernatural increase in growth that has already broken forth and is now showing itself in the natural realm. Yes. I thank you that these people stand under an open heaven, yes. that doors of opportunity are being opened to them, Lord God, and you are pouring out your blessings upon each and every one of yes. them. I thank you that as they give, it is given back to them, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over in their lives. We thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, we want to say thank you for being a part of today's service. Yes. We pray, pray that it's been a blessing to you. Once again, this is David and Tara Webb thanking you for the opportunity for uh, sharing today with us. And until next time, I want you to remember that faith turns setbacks into yes. comebacks. Have a blessed day.